knows best. Bye, Heyong. Did you have enough to eat? Are you sure you studied enough for the test? Have you practiced the guitar, piano, and trumpet for an hour each tonight? Do you have any updates on your test scores? Those would be the starter questions my mother would ask me every night. And if I couldn't say yes to every single question, I would have to stay up a little later and finish whatever task I didn't complete. It annoyed me greatly at the time. But now that I am 25 and live around three hours away from my mother, I am forever grateful for how she treated me. I did not graduate college or start a business, but I was the general manager of a store that generated around $2.5 million a year. I made enough to live somewhat luxuriously, and that was all thanks to all the times my mother made sure I had every single task completed. For my age, I have accomplished a lot. I was making four times I thought I ever would make in a year with my job, and I was dating a girl who was absolutely perfect to me. Her name was Carolyn, and I knew I wanted to spend the rest of my life with this funny, sweet, caring, and fiery woman. She had beautiful short brown hair, eyes that literally changed colors, and a face that made me smile every time she walked by my side. As I say, I loved her a lot, and I knew that I wanted to marry her. That is why when my mother gave me a phone call and asked if she could come move in with me, I said, Yeah, just give me a call when you get close to my house. She let out a sigh of relief and hung up the phone without saying another word to me. My girlfriend was living with me at the time, but I really thought she wouldn't have any sort of problem living with my mother. I mean, even when I told my girlfriend that my mother was coming to live with us for just a while, she gave me a perfect smile and told me that I was a good son. I also knew my mother would be excited I found a woman so perfect for me. My mother came to my house two days ago. Carolyn and I were watching a movie on TV when I got a call from my mother. She told me that she was around 30 minutes away. It was 8 p.m., but I didn't care. I was too excited. I wanted my mother to see how happy and successful I was. But when my mother walked into the house, she immediately started talking about how dirty it was. I tried telling her that we weren't expecting her to come so soon, but with a glare she said, This isn't how I raised you. You used to be such an obedient and good child. Now you are just some rebellious punk. I gave her a small laugh and showed her to our spare bedroom. She started unloading her luggage in the room and I walked back out to our living room. Carolyn looked at me with a face of concern, but with a reassuring hand on her shoulder, I told her that my mother would quickly get used to our house. She gave a small nod and walked to our room. I called out to her that the movie wasn't over yet, but she ignored me and continued to walk into our room. <sighs> yes. My feelings were hurt, but I knew why she would feel insulted. I mean, we both cleaned our house twice a week after work. We freaking busted our asses to make the house seem as immaculate as possible. But what my mother said was pretty much a slap in our face, in Carolyn's face. I finished the movie and walked into the bedroom. Carolyn was already asleep. I lay next to her and tried to fall asleep. But right as I started to drift off, I saw a figure standing in front of our room. It was my mother. I tried to get out of bed and guide her back to her room. But before I got out of bed, my eyelids became heavy and they slowly closed while my mind fell into deep slumber. I woke up yesterday morning and saw that our room was a complete wreck. Every single drawer of our dresser was lying on the ground. Everything that was inside of the dresser now covered pretty much every inch of our room. I got out of bed and heard Carolyn's voice coming from the living room. 
With a sigh, I walked out of our room and saw that my wife and my mother were having a very heated argument. Despite feeling slightly disappointed that there were already problems between my girlfriend and mother, I got in between them and did my best to settle them down. Once they managed to stop yelling at each other, I turned to my mother and asked her, Why did you go through all of our stuff in our room? Were you trying to look for anything? After letting out an exasperated huff, my mother said, I was just looking for your test scores. I know you studied so hard for the test. Why won't you show them to me? Carolyn let out a snort and walked out of the room. I put my hand on my mother's shoulder and sat her down on the couch. Feeling concerned, I asked her, What are you talking about, Mom? It's been almost eight years since I took my last test. Are you feeling okay? Tears started to fall down my mother's face and she started to sob. I patted her shoulder and told her that I would find some help, but she smacked my hand and started to scream. You need to go take that test that you studied so hard for. I just can't let you throw your life away like that. Go take the test and tell me how you did. I started to tell her that I didn't have any upcoming tests and that we were fine, but I couldn't let a word out. Hell, I couldn't even breathe. I reached out for her, but everything blacked out on me. I woke up to the sound of my wife screaming. I couldn't really make out what she was saying, but I found my mother was sitting next to me. When I tried to get up, she pushed me back on the couch and told me to remain calm and relax until the paramedics arrived. When the paramedics got to my house, they loaded me up onto the gurney and pretty much threw me into the back of the ambulance. I tried asking them what was happening, but all I got out of them was a series of unintelligible mumbles and gurgles. Everything went black again, and I didn't wake up until around 6 a.m. this morning. In the past three hours, I learned that I have a tumor on my brain. My chances, they said, are pretty good. I desperately asked the nurse where Carolyn and my mother were. She gave me a small smile and a strange nod before coming back in with Carolyn. Carolyn rushed to my bedside and started to sob on my shoulder. She kept telling me that I was fine and that she was happy they caught me in time. When I asked her where my mother was, she let out another sob and said, Baby, please, please, uh, enough of that. You know, you know your mother died three years ago. I don't know why you keep doing this to me. I, I tried to support you. I tried to understand the stress you must be feeling. But I, I, I even tried to play along with you. I tried to play along with you, baby. But this is just too much for me. It, it's too much for me, baby. Please, please stop. I know my mother died three years ago. But that doesn't mean she's gone. I mean, she was there for me when my previous manager died two years ago. He died from a shot in the head. Did I kill him? Of course I didn't. I don't even own a gun. My mother, she just wanted to make sure I got the best position possible at my job. She wasn't there when Carolyn's ex-fiance was found in the middle of his living room. His face was completely torn off, and his limbs were sliced off and thrown all around his room. <laughs> did, did I do it? How could I? I? I don't even know where he lived. Look, what I'm saying is this. My mother loved me, and she always made sure I always got the best opportunity. For now, though, I will act like I've made a mental breakthrough. I will play the part of the man that was under so much stress that he imagined his mother was still alive. I will even spill tears and let out terrible sobs and tell the doctors, nurses, and Carolyn that I have finally made peace in my heart. But most of all, I will wait for the return of my mother. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha